Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the EGL Summoner Shield number 19 grand finals between Burka and Synchronized. And the timer is a little bit wrong because we are already in Champ Select, so we're kind of in a hurry. My name is The Pash. Casting with me here today are Hindu Man and Elthazar. And let's take a look at Champion Select. Yep, we have five of the six bands already gone through Nasus, Sejuani, Thresh, Riven, and Malphite. We'll go through these in order. Nasus, we've already seen used to devastating effect by Team Synchronized, who are playing on the red side for this first match in this best of three series. We also see Sejuani band out, not played so much, but a very, very strong jungler. Great CC across the board, and very mobile due to the fact she can get over walls with her Arctic Assault Q. Thresh, another very strong support, been played pretty much since his inception back in the latter stages of Season 3. Riven, of course, a very, very tanky naturally, and also very high damage thanks to the bonus shield gained by her attack damage on her Valor. Malphite, I think a lot of people do tend to get rid of him when they just see the unstoppable force used effectively the first time. I think that's one of those images that just gets ingrained in the back of players' minds. Fear is just struck the moment you can see one of those happening to yourself. It's <laughs> truly terrifying. I've said it once, wow. I've said it twice, I've probably said it three times a lady. Cassadin is one of the strongest AP assassins in the game, and he will be banned out until he is nerfed or his perfect counterpick gets put into the game. Well, we did see a Kassadin go through early on today, and actually, the team that had the Kassadin lost. And uh, that's yes. something to, to keep in mind here the, the, while talking about Kassadin. <laughs> Synchronized was actually the team that beat the Kassadin by playing a Nasus in that middle lane, so that was incredibly effective for them. Nasus, however, already banned out, so that option is lost. Already, it looks like Team Synchronized are going to go for a rather tanky team. We already have the Zac locked in. We see Abe hovering over that Shen. Very, very tanky. And Vayne, someone we missed, not banned. No. Very, very strong late game champion. This could be very bad. And they have that perfect defensive composition as well, because the Stun Bear can be used defensively as well. If we see, say, the Lissandra or the Ramus trying to get onto that vein, we can see the Stun Bear just come down and the burst will come forth. We also have Zack there. Great crowd control with Elastic Slingshot and Let's Bounce. And Shen, great split pusher and also very, very good at protecting his carry, of course, because of Stand United. One of the unanimously voted best abilities, I must say, for <laughs> a coordinated team. Yeah. Shen, I like to play, but he's not one of the better solo queue champions because you cannot coordinate well enough with your team. However, this is no mere solo queue match. This is, of course, the final of the EGL Summoner's Shield number 19 between Burka and Team Synchronized. We've got 3,200 RP and, of course, the Triumphant Rise skin on the line to the winner of this game. Well, I've seen some more picks come through here. Um, interestingly, the Blitzcrank got picked up here by Burka United, so they're going to have... A Blitzcrank, a robot, a rocket-grabbing robot down in that bottom lane. And, um, while, you know, personally, it's just my opinion, but I think a ban on Blitzcrank is wasted. But still, he can be a very menacing champion. Uh, if the Blitzcrank is good, or the hooks come in at the wrong times, you know, it, let's just say a single Blitzcrank hook could potentially turn the tides in any given fight. Definitely, and it also, of course, opens up a lot more opportunities for level 1, because you can just steal blue buffs over the wall with that rocket grab. You can steal red buffs in a very similar fashion. It does look like Ost is going to go for that Oriana. This is an amazingly strong team fight composition picked up by Team Synchronized for this first game. Yeah, that is, that is true indeed. Um, something, now that you mentioned level 1, Burka United, I mean, if they really wanted to get the first blood or uh, at least a few flashes in level 1 engagements, they could potentially get the hook and the puncturing taunt from Ramus uh, from level 1, but of course if it fails, Ramus with a puncturing taunt, uh, I think it's not so good to start in, in, in the jungle with. Definitely not. Also, of course, we saw those 
get nerfed fairly recently as well. Both Terrify and Puncturing Taunt got nerfed. Community feedback saying that 3 second Taunt and 3 second Fear was just so frustrating to deal with. So, its duration has actually been nerfed quite significantly. And we may see that actually be the difference between a kill and a not kill through this game. It's highly unlikely we'll see any level 1 action though from Berkey United. Obviously Annie with her stun, that'll be up at level 1. And Ariana's ball will be able to give vision early on if she does take that first of all, her Q. So they'll be able to get good vision of them incoming. And it's not the greatest opportunity for them to really do anything at level 1, unless you take Puncher in top. But that puts Ramis behind as we said. Definitely. Delay is now on. Three minutes until we'll get into this game. Level 1's been discussed. What do you think about team fights, though, Hindu, with these current team compositions? We've got Rengar, Ramus, Lissandra, Jinx, and Blitzcrank against Annie, Zack, Vayne, Shen, and Oriana. Synchronized. What Synchronized have done here is they've picked a very good mobile team comp that's very good at engaging and disengaging. Ori Oriana with her ball, Vayne able to tumble away, Annie with the stuns obviously going to be able to get there. Shen can tank it up and taunt away, and Zack can also jump away if required. The enemy team, however, all want to engage on the target, so that's why they picked up a Blitzcrank here. The Blitzcrank is there to help initiate this and force the initiation if possible when those situations go awry and stop it. So it's going to be interesting to see how the blitz can works out in the bottom lane vein annie should be very strong in that lane unless blitz can land some nice early taunts and hopefully ramus can come in at the right time we'll have to see yeah blitz taunts are very very powerful okay we are right. sitting around one minute 40 we need to fill one minute 40 gentlemen you know there's there is, you know i i, I let's yeah, let's, let's play a game quick. let's play a game uh, league of legends a game inside League of Legends that you can play in Champ Select and that is spot the ball delivery system because every team that has an Oriana also has a ball delivery system. I'm gonna give this over to you, Althazar. What do you think? What's the ball delivery system? Zach. <laughs> you get a thousand no, points. That's too and obvious. That's I will personally <laughs> I, I will send you per I will personally send you a cookie once you give me your home address. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call something different as the ball delivery system this game. You ready for this? Oh my god, this gonna be here good. it comes. Vayne uses ultimate, tumbles to become invisible. Shen ults in, invisibly. The ball goes on to Shen. Shen taunts with ball, ball goes off. Genius. Oh, that was genius. a major play-by-play -play that, that prediction. Yeah, if that happens, you have to cast it exactly the same way. Um, you have to sit there and think as a play-by-play -play caster, though, that this situation <laughs> could arise. Yeah. So it's pre-planned in the mind, you see. Genius. But 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 can can you actually shield Tibbers? Uh I don't think you can shield Tibbers. No, unfortunately. It's, that would have been. That would be that would be amazing. It'd be even better if Shen ulted onto Tibbers and then delivered <laughs> the ball that way. Genius. <laughs> Shen ults Tibbers, Tibbers goes ham deep into enemy territory so the ball can be delivered into the back lines. Did you well played? Oh, Six the five nine. man 3000 uh. ELO shockwave. Yeah, that's, that's something to look forward to, ladies and gentlemen. This is what we are probably, possibly, hopefully, about to see in this game. And it's going to be a good one. That it most certainly will. Delay is finished. We are into the loading screen. Hopefully the same fate does not befall us as we had in the semi-finals. I shouldn't have mentioned it, should I? No, you shouldn't have. No. I shouldn't. Oh, I'm... I'm Never it works for me. Though. It works for me. Oh, thank God for that. Oh no, now everything is crashing. It's not so good. Oh, okay, good. Skin war instantaneously decimated by Synchronized. Oh, four skins. Four skins. For nothing. On. Four for nothing here in the early. Be careful saying four fight. skin. Remember, casters, <laughs> never say four skin. Okay? <laughs> you avoid that as much as possible. Quadra skin. Then That's better. Yeah, That's quadra better. skin. Is Enemy, Safety quadra first, skin. gentlemen. Safety first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Comedy stylings from his children. Yeah, very nice. Ladies and gentlemen, this is EGO. <laughs> and we are <laughs> in the loading screen for the Summoner Shield number 19 Grand Finals. On the blue side, it will be our team uh, synchronized. <laughs> no, actually, team Berkey synchronized United. are on red, right? Yeah. Broker United Berkey on the United red side, on the blue side. Johansson in the top blue lane. Mikkel RP in the jungle. Posei Magnet in mid. DWT on AD carry and Sarchan on support. 
Meanwhile, on the red side, now I got it. Team synchronized. Bobo Densei Ape in the top lane. Kimix in the jungle. Bobo Densei Ost in the middle lane. Imp has AD carry and mod on support. Uh, my game crashed, so I'm gonna try again. Oh, that's bad. Yeah. Uh... But I am getting actually something moving. Well, not right now because we are in a pause, so that is no client related issue. That is actually a pause that's happening right now. And um, hopefully we'll be getting back into this game fairly shortly. And hopefully this will coincide with uh, Hindu Man's appear uh, appearance in the game as well. That would be it's lovely. all a conspiracy. Yeah. Either that or I'm paranoid. I think I'm paranoid. That's, that's a pretty You think you're song, paranoid? Like... You might just be right. I'm not going to tell you if you're right or not. That makes me paranoid. <laughs> Damn it, Pash. Why would you do this? Because I am evil. Are you evil? Yes, you are. Another great song. I think that one's Metallica. Oh, there is. Uh, there are foreign language words being thrown around in the chat, so we aren't going to get any language from... Uh, language. Any information from there. Language, likely not as well. I have never been able to learn a language just by reading it. To be honest, I've never been able to learn a language beyond English because, being wonderfully in, uh, ignorant as a British person, we apparently believe that the rest of the world must learn our language. Until we all learn Chinese in the future, yes. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. There, there will be a point when the Chinese take over everything. Or, we could see a firefly happen and America and China merge to become the Alliance and we all become independents because we want to find Mal Reynolds. Or, you know, we nuke ourselves and uh, build some underground vaults to survive. And then stuff goes horribly wrong in this uh, vault and... Yeah. Then Fallout happens. Or... I might as well just spill or, it out. <laughs> or... A giant rift appears beneath the Pacific Ocean and giant monsters come out of it. We build massive robots to fight them. They require two pilots for some contrived reason. Well, we just don't I understand what's I going on in that chat. I think... <laughs> we need to stop breaking copyright, I think. We might be getting in trouble with this. No, why? We're, we aren't using we, we aren't using this to, to, you know, promote ourselves. We aren't saying, hey, the EGL is like, insert copyrighted thing here. So it's good. <laughs> We're fine. Okay, right, that's good. <laughs> so well, who knows? Nobody should have a problem with years in the future. Yeah. We don't even know. It's like warp travel. Imagine that. That would be awesome. Or if EVE Online style things happen, that'd be pretty cool. Imagine that, Imagine that happening, that'd be really awesome. <laughs> it's just like everyone owning spaceships flying around. The thing is, I feel like... It's, it, it'd, it'd be, be like happened, it'd be uh, like cars today. We will have our settlements in open space. Well, actually, that would probably not be the healthiest thing to do, but it gives us an excuse no, to use spaceships like cars parked in front yeah. of our space station. Yeah, we're fl every, everyone's house is a separate spell, uh, space station, but they're all subtly connected. Oh. Right, it looks like people are actually into the game now. The pause yeah. has been lifted. <laughs> That's we true. Can stop talking we can stop nonsense. talking about space. Although space is a pretty good thing. Space. I might turn the music down a little bit. There we go. And here we are. The overlays will come on now as well. It is going to be Barca United on the blue side, uh, going in deep early on. I think they're actually trying to go for that early grab. We haven't actually seen Posei Magna on the Lissandra go for a first pick, so of course they could have gone for an early Ring of Frost for some nice CC right there. Oh, we actually see the members of Team Synchronized get scouted out by the Rengar as they're attempting to make a blue steal. So it does look like the posing was all for naught, and we will see a fairly Minions normal start coming out. Gone. Unsurprising, a lot at stake in this game, as we've already said, 3,200 RP. And then as I say that, we see Berkey United go oh. in for another engage. The stun lance. Oh, flash timbers in from, no, flash stun in from Annie Sarchon in a lot of trouble. The shadow dash does lie on to him as well. It's condemned away. First blood goes over to Vayne. So many slightly non-optimal abilities picked up by the members of Team Synchronized. We have Abe starting with Shadow Dash. 
We have Chemex starting with the slingshot. This is definitely slowing down the early game. And of course, Imp started with the Cadet. Yes, he picked up first blood, but that does mean that it's going to be level three or four before he can actually start trying to trade with this Jinx. Yes, that's very true. As a sense, ladies and gentlemen, we are experiencing some uh, technical is uh, issues with our cast caster Hindu man who was supposed to be casting. Fine. Yeah, who? Yeah, he'll be fine. He'll be joining us next game, hopefully, if uh, he doesn't sort these issues out. As it stands, yes, Team Synchronized picking up the first blood here. Uh, very early on, of course, means very early on. No 400 gold for you, Team Synchronized. You did burn Blitzkrieg's flash, so that's good. No, no, they actually didn't. But he pulls in vain, and now she is in a little bit of trouble as the Zap gets caught by Mod. Lots of damage going down onto them. Look at that DW2 going in deep. Using the rockets to deal damage to both targets at once. Very strong engagement, and of course, Jinx, known for very strong early game harass. Zap, long range, good damage, and the ability to switch from to the Fishbones rocket. Always very, very nice in the early stages of the game. We do see Chemex coming up towards the top lane. We may see them going onto Johansson, the post eye, who's currently sat in that top lane brush. Chemex goes in, there oh, we he go. He doesn't know which direction to come from, so he just flashes over the wall, but that, of course, opens up us to flash away over the wall. And in the top lane, Johansson goes dangerously low against a Zack gank that came in. Zack actually lost his Cell Division passive there, actually. He did get ignited and go down. Fortunately, a Zack does not die the first time. We must kill him twice for him to truly stay dead. Yes, just like Aatrox and Nivea and uh, all the other revive passive champions. Actually, are there any Oops. more? I don't think so. Bit of a so, quarrel going down in the bottom lane. Passive. Well, the yep. audience is ultimate. It's not a revive passive. But, uh. True enough. It's terrible regardless. <laughs> well, it depends. It's been used to very strong effect. If you remember, in the Battle of the Atlantic, Chaos no, I mean, used it to amazing effect. I mean, it's terrible to play against it because, um. It's annoying. Ah. That's what I meant. It is. I, I agree entirely. So, 4 minutes 45 in. Hook lands onto Annie. Nicely played. Flame Chompers are immediately thrown out. DWG is going to deal some damage. Is going to pick up the kill. Imp deals some aggression onto Sarkon, but he is able to walk away from that as he sees his support die to the clutches of the Jinx. Mikkel RP came into the top lane. Abe didn't burn any of his summoner spells because they were both on cooldown. Well. That's what happens. Gotta have your spells on cooldown. Not on cooldown if you want to use them. Rengar, though, lots of aggression in the mid lane. Ost getting aggressed upon, but he might be able to take down Post Saint Magnitude as well as the Ignite takes away. Mikkel RP will now run after him. He tries to use the dissonance to run, but you can't run against the Ramus. The interesting thing was that the auto attack came in after the dissonance, so. You actually do get to slow down a little bit as you cast before the actual movement speed hit, allowing Mikkel to hit Ariana. Well, <laughs> you can see in pieces on the floor. Who knows who will have to pick up the pieces after this. It's not going to be Chemex because he's going to be backing out to his base fairly soon. So yeah, also, he's uh, preoccupied with, the own, with, his, with his own pieces that he obviously has to pick up as well. So Very true. That's an Who issue. Knows? We may have to see Sarkon picking up his own pieces later in the game. <laughs> Might very well be. I wonder how sturdy that robot is built. It's a pretty tough robot. Well, we do see um, Chemix going pretty low in his jungle, and in the top lane, Johansson just keeps going aggressive onto Abe. Jumps into the brush, jumps back out. Tries to deal as much damage as possible. Not quite able to pick up the kill yet. Did go dangerously low once himself. He's outfarming his laning opponent. So that's good. And the hook lands in the bottom lane. Again onto Bobo Densei. A mod and the Ramus rolls in. Jinx will pick herself up another kill. And in the top lane, Joe Hansen goes pretty low. But Abe not going in there. Playing it safe. DWT is still going aggressive here onto him, trying to deal some damage, but she will be able to walk away. 
Yep. That's the thing with the Shen, going back to, of course, the Abe. Ooh, we actually see Johansson coming in the bottom lane. Oh, Miklar P though, the middle lane, and Johansson also middle lane. Ost will explode here. And another kill goes over to Burka United as a uh, hook is attempted onto main. And Zax just gonna jump in here into this bottom lane, deal some aggression onto DLWT. Gets snared by the Flame Chompers, and so gets Vayne. And that means that DWT and Sarkon live to uh, fight another day. Yeah, I'm going to imagine that Mon Nimp are going to go a little bit more aggressive now because they know DWT is on low health. They do. He does, however, have both his summoner spells still available. Hasn't burned either of them yet. The fact that he's 2-0 without using summoner spells is slightly alarming in the early stage of the game. He's already level 6, which means Super Mega Death Rocket can help him snowball even harder. Indeed. Sarkon uh, activating the overdrive, looking for a hook down there, but uh, he can't land it and instead gets stunned in the face by Annie and takes some damage. But other than that, this game is... I don't know about you, but I'm getting this feel of this game. Oh, look at that, mod in the bottom lane going very low. Super Mega Death Rocket, not quite enough, but DWT will flash in trying to land the zap. He does not land it. Imp will be able to tumble away to safety as well. I don't know about you, but this game, it has sporadic... You know, sp sporadic times of action where something actually happens, but then everything just goes back to standard status quo laning mode. No team has really deviated from their lanes yet, apart from Rengar joining in on that gank in the middle lane. They didn't make anything out of that, they just went back to their That's lanes and sad. continued farming. Ost coming on the bottom lane though. Oh. So are available. Aware of it, rather. Damage Sharkon going down. Caesar tries to hook her in. Attack being used. Deal some poke, but instead of sticking around, Ost will move back to his mid lane. Give good poke dealt, and it does allow Imp and Mod to push out this lane before backing if they so choose. And meanwhile, on the top lane, Abe actually starting to farm for an advantage against. Gatman goes down as well, actually. Gatman quite low. Look at that, Johansson attacking Bobo Denze, Abe rapidly and repeatedly, and he gets taunted under the turret, and now Abe. We'll turn around, the aggression, uh, turn around the aggression, or not, as you don't want to follow Rengar into brush. Never a good idea, of course. Unseen Predator allowing him to leap from the brush to an unsuspecting target. Once again, we see Oss trying to split push up to this top lane, or rather not split push, but roam. However, the totem went down, he is spotted out, and he's going to have to retreat to farm out his middle lane. He's doing fairly well at the moment, he's slightly higher than Posei Magnet. That of course changed with this minion wave, but that means very little at this early stage in the game. We do actually see Berkey United having approximately a thousand gold lead ten minutes, but that's nothing particularly remarkable. We one good fight, four team synchronized will really flip that on its head. Yeah indeed. Early gold lead, but it's not that big as you have just said. And um, four to two in kills after ten minutes and thirty-five seconds. So yeah, now it's back to status quo. All the players on their lanes, farming away the minions, trying to oh flash burn actually in the middle lane is asked. Dodges some damage, I suppose. I think if Posey Magnet actually went in in that situation, he would not have gotten out alive. He might have picked up the kill, but. I uh, I think Oth's flash was a little too hasty. Well, that flash is burnt. Mikalapi looked like he was going to try and come into this middle lane. He does meet Chemex down in the river, so he's going to be spotted out. And there are the careful pings. You see Modnip retreating straight back to their turret. No nonsense. And Mikal, unfortunately not able to use that power ball to hit a jackpot at this point. <laughs> Back to the greatest quote once again. Yes. Jackpot. Ramis, well, 1 0 and 2 so far. Not what I'd call jackpot, but Jose Magnet and Wing aggressive here onto Ostras and Tumas Youth, but he gets shockwave back, and there's the Stant United to save his life. So that's certainly a jackpot for Ost, who just picked up a kill in the middle lane. But here Kimix comes into the bottom lane. Let's bounce his UZWT in the middle of him. Nicely gets pulled away by Blitzcrank, but Annie lands. 
some damage onto him, but he's still running. He's still running away. They're just gonna aggress onto Blitzcrank now. They will surely be able to take him down, or will they? He's running! He's running faster! Oh, there comes Zack, runs, jumps in, takes him down, but Jinx... Lucky survivor in this engagement, he actually might manage to take down Mod. No, not quite. It's a super mega, super mega death rocket. Ah, missed its target by a very slight margin, but that's three members of Synchronize now. Piling up here at the bottom rain, but Mikkel RP comes in, gets condemned against the wall. The aggression immediately gets turned around, and he has to flash away. Tibbers nicely tanking that turret. Imp going deep. He will be able to pick up the kill with one more tumble. He doesn't even use the tumble. He just procs the silver bolts. Wow, what an engagement for Synchronize down in that bottom lane. Meanwhile, on the top lane, Johansson Poseidon manages to take the first turret of the game. Abe comes back with a finished Sunfire Cape. 12 minutes into the game, that's very impressive, and you can see Johansson going incredibly low. Flash is forced. Is Abe going to follow up onto this with the Tarot? Oh, there's the yes, Flash yes. Shadow Dash. He's going to dive him, and will he be able to pick up the kill? Yes, he will, and gets out alive with lots of health to spare. That was a long chase. Here we see the strength of the Shen get so very powerful after his first item. Sunfire Cape basically negating Johansson damage. He's got 116 armor this early on, and we don't see any armor penetration coming out from this Rengar just yet. He has now picked up the Brutalizer, but unfortunately that's not going to have an amazing amount of effect without Mikkel RP's help right now. Abe is going to be able to start snowballing this lane. He is indeed, as the first turret of the game went down to Burka United, just as you said, prior to Shen taking down that Rengar. And now DW, DW, DWT, man, and Sarkon aggressing onto this bottom outer turret here. Mod is back. They might be looking for something here. There is no jungler nearby, so it would be a 2v2 situation. And down to that bottom lane, many kills have happened. Vayne picking up three kills in the first 14 minutes of the game. Jinx picking up two. The difference in kills is outmatched by the difference in farm, so if you actually look at the gold, Jinx ahead in farm despite being uh, down a kill. So things are pretty tense down that bottom lane, and uh, I'm excited to see what more action we'll see from there. Yeah, but if you look at the statistics, 14 CS is approximately equal in gold to a kill, so farm is far more important in this game, you can say it so many times, but some people still think that getting more kills makes you more powerful. In some ways it does, but getting more farm is actually more worth it. Especially if you can have a slightly prolonged laning phase. Mikkel RP tried to come into the bottom lane, but the hook did not imp. Tumbles away at the last second. And once again, the status quo. Yep, that's that was actually a nice little play from there from Imp. He dodged the hook by tumbling and in the immediately I think he condemned Blitzcrank away just as he was trying to hook. And I think that displaced his hook. It looked like it. And that allowed him Oz to not hit the hook. In the middle lane. In the middle lane. Oz coming in. Stand United has been used, but nothing's going to happen other than that. As Mikkel RP has activated his tremors to shake, shake it up. And uh, that's it. That's about it. Back to status quo. We, see your hand. we saw your hands coming out of this bottom lane. Throw the hunt used. Oz could get dived on. Oh! Oz oh, explodes. Johansson. And Posei Magnet, they they take the short route, they make it quick and painless. Yep, thereabouts. <laughs> About as close to painless as you can expect in the League of Legends. <laughs> well, uh, at least it's, would not have approved. I'm pretty sure I had this exact conversation with Tempe before, and I said, it's not painful for long, so it's painless. <laughs> yeah, I can approve of this logic. Yeah, but Johansson, very low under his turret, but Ape maybe ganked here as Mikkel RP comes in. Oh! Lands the taunt onto him. This is the battle of the taunts, ladies and gentlemen. In the meanwhile, though, in the bottom lane, another engagement going down. Sarkon going very low, he gets condemned against his own turret. Vayne is on a rampage, and they're still onto Ape in the top lane. Mikkel RP and Johansson both chasing him, but now they realize we are going in a little bit too deep. And thus they retreat. But synchronized, having picked up two kills here in this bottom lane, will be looking to do this dragon right here, and they will immediately start. Absolutely nothing can be done by Bucky United at this point. This is a free dragon. 16 minutes into the game, and that's going to stack out a very nice early gold lane. 
not massively significant. Oh, the Super Mega Death Rocket almost steals it away. Oh, but it close. does pick that up. And um, there we do see now approximately 2,000 gold advantage. 16 minutes, two teams synchronized. Yeah, fail smites, they happen. They happen to even the best. Somebody say Saint Vicious because he's a pro jungler and he missed smites, so no needs feel bad. Still got the dragon, so that's a nice advantage over to team synchronizer in the top lane. The turret goes down and we might see a complete vice versa of the situation before. This time it's Ape taking down the turret, Johansson being in pursuit. He cannot run towards the brush. Gets slowed, gets picked up. Yeah, Ape doing a couple more turret hits than that was actually necessary. He started falling back and then came back to the turret to finish it off. So he actually took maybe one or two tower hits more than he should have in that engagement. We do see Posei Magnet using that uh, glacial path, but taking a lot of damage in the process. So Mikkel RP will hopefully come to help him out fairly soon. Meanwhile, Posei Magnet will pick up his blue buff. The blue buff was actually stolen away as well. Or picked up in a previous engagement by Posei Magnet. So, less taking the blue buff and more refreshing it. <laughs> yeah, blue buff is nice to have. Especially early on in the game. And uh, yeah, Oz, Mikkel RP comes in, but the damage from Oz is very high already. He has picked up the Rabadon's death cap. That's going to boost his damage, obviously. Tyr is stacking up quite nicely as well, so he will be able to give that ball commands all day long. But now Johansson comes down from the top lane. Activates his ult. Will he actually go in here? He's gonna try to jump onto us, if anything. Nope. Ultimate runs out. He's gonna give up the turret. Synchronized picks up another turret. Middle outer. Turret lead is now 2-1. to one. And that's how the situation resolved. Yeah, Chemix actually revealed himself a little bit too early in that engagement. You did not actually see him stick around long enough for him to bait Johansson in. Of course, he didn't actually know he was there, but had he waited a little while longer, he could have baited Johansson in and then engaged for what would almost be a free kill at that point. And Ape going aggressive onto Johansson here. Um, I just want to point out, it's 20 minutes into the game and the lane phase is still more or less going on. Um, both bottom lane turrets still standing. Middle outer just went down for uh, Broca United. Both top outers are down, but other than that, all the champs are still on their lanes, and we have yet to see any team-wide rotation. Uh, definitely. As far as Burke United are concerned, they need to end this laning phase as fast as possible, because the longer it goes on, the more time you're basically giving Imp to farm himself up. He makes coming into we the bottom lane. Engagement. Uh, not quite landing. Electric shot, not quite enough. Attempt, attempt an engagement. Mikkel RP comes in. Posei Magnet is here right now. Oh, he's gonna they jump straight onto engaged. the vein, but she flashes away and stuns Mikkel RP against the wall. Here comes Sandra though, and this is the first big fight of this game. Kimix getting frozen to him. Stand United used onto him, but it is cancelled by his untimely death. No, actually, it's not cancelled. Abe is now there to join the fight. Is he gonna land the Shadow Dash onto any good target? He's gonna try to land it onto either Lysandra or Jinx. Lysandra gets uh, stunned by any Sarkon actually getting pulled in, flashing the shockwave. Nicely done right there. Mikkel RP going in deep. He wants this kill, but he will get taken down by Abe. Fight Grage is on. Lysandra now able to pick up one kill. Imp under the turret. Glacial Path just cancelled before he would get there. But Lysandra picks up another kill under the turret. It's a double kill. Will he get the triple kill? No! Oh, yes, he will. It's a triple kill for Lysandra. So this ends in a 3-4-3 three, three situation. 3-4-3 three three tr uh, trades. What a crazy fight. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the top lane, Johansson having no part in that fight at all, and he's just going to melt down this inner turret. So that's actually quite a large advantage coming out for the Berkey United team right there. Yeah, that's Saw true. three people die, and Abe go very, very low. He took a lot of tower damage as well. However, we see Imp being able to take down this turret before Sarkon gets there, or before, rather, Sarkon can do something of huge relevance. Yep, down goes that turret. So we actually see a 3 for 1 turret lead on 21 minutes. Dragon respawning in just under 1.5 minutes. We'll Joe see Johansson. Hansen, maybe going for something here. Joe Hansen, you evil, evil person. Kimix manages to smite it away. Or no, he didn't even smite it, he just attacked it. Now he's gonna re-engage onto Kimix. Usually the elastic slot. Slow him down a little bit. 
He's getting joined by Ramus though, so no further following is done by Kimix, which is probably the best idea. Yep, Ost lobs his totem ward across that into that river brush. Johansson could not get that engagement down. We do see the turret traded across in that bottom lane. DWT does have a completed bloodthirst at this stage of the game, but that's actually not as much important, really, as we do see the Blade of the Rune King and the entirety of the components for a Phantom Dancer currently sat on... Great going aggressive here in the top lane of Johansson. The Ignite was used, but here comes Ramis, and they're going to turn this one around. No, they're not. Johansson just wants to get away from that Shen. Which is quite reasonable after the beating that he just received from that Shen. And in the middle lane, Kimix jumps in onto Pose Magna. There's no way he will survive this one. Or he, he does use the Glacial Path. Just run into Annie. They'll get stunned. Gets shockwaved. Gets taken down. Sarkon now being followed by Austin Mod. Will go down here as well. Or will he? No, he manages to survive. Wow. That was pretty close. Yep. Yeah. That overdrive speeding up just enough to survive. Kemix looked like he wanted to try and jump across onto DWT, but his teammates were of no mind to do so. So they're just going to rotate and take the dragon once again. Pretty much uncontested. We might see the Super Mega Death Mode come across. No, we do not. Another uncontested dragon goes across the team synchronized, and that advances the gold lead to 4,000. So almost doubled in the past five minutes. It's actually 5,000 at this point almost. And Abe and Johansson are still having the fight of the tanks in the top lane. <laughs> so, this is wonderful to watch, but here comes Blitzcrank to help out. Will he be able to pull the Shen back in? He's obviously waiting for the Shadow Dash to be burned. But they will back off now. The three-man Death Squad from Team Synchronized, four-man Death Squad, is making their way up to that top lane to help out their Shen in the, his pushing attempt. So, they're gonna aggress onto this top inner turret here and Zack loading up his elastic slingshot will they actually go in nope he cancels it Abe was in position to engage uh, quite nicely as well they're gonna find Lysandra here though as the hook lands onto Austin this may be very very huge for Burka United lots of low health bark for team synchronized Mott goes down super mega death rocket is enough to pick up Kimix Abe is gonna be the last target they're aggressive on here Mikkel RP charging up front landing the taunt Abe will go... No, he manages to shadow dash away. The zap dodges it. Will he be able to pick him up here? He gets back, pulled back in. He gets knocked up, but he's so tanky. The zap misses. He's still running. He's still running. Flash in, but the taunt does land from Ramus, and he will finally go down. That was a very belated 5 for naught. That was basically an ace coming out from Berk United, and that has flipped the game. Not in terms of gold, but the kills are flipped, and we are going to see the turret advantage flip in favor of Berk United. And it's a middle inner turret as well, which means that they can roam through the jungle at their will pretty much right now. Yes, and that fight, so, so vital. It all began with Zack catching out that Lysandra. Lysandra immediately, immediately using Ring of Frost to uh, stun him, which is quite reasonable. But that means Zack was preoccupied with Lysandra, and Blitzcrank used that exact moment to pull in Orianna. That means Orianna would explode in a 5v1, pretty much. And the rest of Team Synchronized were only there with three people, as Zack had been uh, stunned and taken quite low by that Lysandra. Lysandra, with her Glacial Path, had absolutely no, uh, no problems to, to get back into that fight. And so they turned it around quite nicely, a 4 for 1. Abe heading bot to do a little bit of split pushing. Little did he realize that he'd actually find DWT there temporarily. But he heads towards the middle lane to try and engage with his teammates. Stand United is currently available on Abe, so he can get to team fights when they occur. Split pushing. Very, very standard to see on any Shen player. Yeah. <laughs> really not a surprise. Shen player split push. Nickel RP flashing in. Nice Zonius from us keeps him away from the taunt. That's that bounce used by Zack. They might turn this fight around quite nicely. Johansson going deep onto Mott. Flash of the way though, gets picked up by Orianna, and the rest of Burke United are able to disengage for now. Flame Chopper's getting thrown out. Yep. Synchronized not gonna get anything more out of this, but they do run directly straight towards the Baron. And is it a good idea to start off with the Baron here? They are going for this, but Burke United knows what's going on, and generally. They have the higher damage here. 
Nickel RP going in, landing the taunt onto uh, us. Not quite landing the taunt, but knocking him back. There's the Shockwave pulling back two members of Brooklyn United, and Synchronized manages to pull it off. They are able to take down DWT here. Not quite. There's the flash in from Shen. He gets picked up. Austin, in the meanwhile, picks up Blitzcrank and Posey Magnet, the last surviving target of Burka United. That should put them into their place. Things synchronized as they go back to Baron and continue doing it. And that was a fourth and hot trade. So the trades are going all over the place now. We did see a very good stand United come out from a... The taunt only landed on two people where it could have landed on maybe three or four, but apparently irrelevant as a 4 for 0 trade was picked up. Mythal RP went a little bit further than he probably should have. He didn't have the support there and he did fall right there. 1 minute and 45 seconds before Dragon respawns and we do see a 6,000 gold advantage there on being held by Team Synchronized at this stage of the game. And we actually also see a pause. A pause, indeed. So, what a game, really. We see the black screen. <coughs> Burka, is it the black screen? It is the black screen of Doom. At least it isn't the blue screen of death, oh. as Tempe said. Yeah, that's true. Not the blue screen of death, still. Black screen of Doom. Very dangerous, indeed. Um, hopefully, Invented they will by Sauron. To, hopefully they will be able to save themselves from that. As it stands, though, let's take a closer look at this game, as it has been a wild one so far. Burka United and Synchronized, they are just going at it. Synchronized had the gold advantage for most of the game, but then Burka United had one deciding team fight at their middle outer turret. And uh, what do you think? What could, I have, could they have made out of the situation that does not end in the enemy getting barren? <laughs> That team fight just did not go well for Berkey United at all. As I said, Nickel RP went too far. He overstretched himself. No, but and I, I mean, as we saw, they 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 had they had a pretty good fight at the middle inner tur uh, middle outer turret here, uh, Berkey United, when the hook did land on Oriana. Now that gave them a four for one trade, I believe. And now there was a team five for not on the uh, on. Oh yeah, five for nothing. Basically, it, it was, was a very good fight for, for Brooklyn in, uh, United, and Synchronized now has Baron. What went wrong in I that think, in between those two events? I think they had the right idea. Turrets, I would say, are good priorities to have. 27 minutes into the game, you can almost say that it's worthwhile to let the Baron be for a little, little bit, and then take an inhibitor, then go for Baron. So they took two turrets, they took the turret advantage, and they took the kill advantage briefly as well. But the main thing where things went wrong, as I previously said, was just the team fight as we saw Team Synchronize go to the Baron, was just not as refined as we saw from that fight at the top inner turret. We saw, as I've, I think I've said twice already, Mikkel RP outstretched himself. He didn't have support there. And so when Abe and Ost were there pushing the rest of the team away, Abe shadow dash forwards. We saw the shockwave land on two of the two squishies as well. It landed on both Posse Magnet and onto DWT. And that resulted in a four for naught. Yes, one of the members did manage to get out, so it's not an equivalent trade, so to speak. But it's still a massive advantage for Team Synchronize, as we did see them pick up the Baron. Yep, Baron buff indeed. Picked up by Team Synchronize, and they will be doing great things with it. Well, they should be doing great things with it. Otherwise, it is wasted. We're still yeah, in the pause. It is the Joss Summoner Shield number 19 Grand Finals. Between Burke United on the blue side and Team Synchronized on the right side. 32... Uh, no, 32,000. 3200 RP and a Triumphant Rise skin are the stakes for this game. And uh, who will win? That is the question we'll ask ourselves. Speaking of stakes, how do you like your stakes? Do you like them uh, medium rare or well done? Medium rare. Medium rare, Always medium yeah. rare. Well, medium rare. It's just the best. It is. We see Chemix reconnecting, and we Wonderful. will see the unpause. And we and shall we stop go. talking about food now and back to League of Legends. Food's pretty good, but <laughs> League of Legends is better. <laughs> why do you think? Why do you think the pros are so slim? Think about it. Think about it. They play so much League, they don't have time for food. Ain't nobody got time for that. You know, um, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm just gonna withdraw any comments there. But that's that's that's. I mean, come on. You said, look at how slim our pros are, and I say, look at NA. Uh, 
Uh, there's, there's the EU. Okay, okay, the EU ones. <laughs> no offense, NA, but EU are better. Are just better examples this. for this so situation. In then EU, again, in EU only, League of Legends is better than food. So if you have money and you should decide whether buying skins for League of Legends or buying food, you should go with skins for League of Legends. Well, actually, absolutely. you shouldn't. But, but well, it um, depends. Depends on what. <laughs> It well, depends if you can actually benefit from the skins. Pointless skin buying is a plague upon the game. No, it isn't at all. Right? Well, you remember, if you buy a skin, the, I have a little chart when I buy skins. It's like, do I play the champion? Do I play the champion enough? Do I like the skin? Go. It's, it's a three-step chart, and I have just deviated for one and a half minutes. Why did you not stop me? No, because there's really nothing to talk about. Synchronized, they have the Baron, but all they're doing is farming, 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 farming. And um, the Baron is already at half capacity, and they still haven't started any tangible push yet. Might do so now that Zack charges his elastic slingshot, but Team Synchronized for a team that has just picked up Baron, they are very inactive. More inactive than when they didn't have the Baron. They're just going to move down and take up this, uh, pick up this dragon here. Yes, I mean... It's nice to have the zoning potential, but that's not what you use a Baron for. Definitely not. We do see Abe heading towards that bottom lane once again. More split pushing happen. Abe's got a lot of items right now, actually. This is worth pointing out. He has the Sunfire Cape. He also has Thornmail, Spirit Visage, and on top of that, an Avarice Blade. So it's likely he's going to absolutely maximize that potential for split pushing by picking up the... Static Shiv. I almost forgot its name for a second there. <laughs> Static Shiv, definitely very good. A lot of Shen's like to Trinity Force as well. Both help with his split pushing, of course, by giving him bonus damage and attack speed. I think Static Shiv is a good pick in this stage as well, because it gives bonus movement speed and a very nice quantity of it as well. So it'll help him get into engagement slightly faster. Yeah, Actually, see nice. Johansson, the post. Yeah, p p Synchronized sat off to the side, it almost looked like he was thinking of an engagement. The synchronizer just... You know, dancing around this middle turret, but if we actually look at the buff indicator here, the Baron buff is almost gone, and uh... If... Ooh. If Ost would have gotten pulled in here, that would have been the, uh... You know, the icing on the cake of irony. Because Synchronized picks up the Baron, then does nothing to actually use it. Here in the bottom lane, though, Abe going aggressive, forcing... DWT to flash over the wall, to flash away and uh, into safety, and he's just going to continue pushing down this middle, uh, this bottom outer inner turret. Jesus. <laughs> this bottom inner turret, that's how it goes. And now the rest of Synchronizer are also making moves onto the middle inner turret, and they pick that up as well, so it seems now they have pulled the lever, hit the switch that says, let's go. Worth button activate. <laughs> And we saw see that four-man death squad as we saw previously rotate towards that top lane, but there's nobody there this time, so they're going to pick up three turrets. However, you can't really count that as Baron worth because Baron disappeared just before they finished the middle turret. <laughs> okay, team synchronized. They're more active without the Baron. They should not pick up the next Baron. I think Broken United will turn this game around by giving team synchronized Baron and then using their period of inaction to do something on the map. <laughs> The synchronizer apparently thinks, uh, if we go in now, we might lose Baron. <laughs> so it's not worth it. In the middle lane, Imp getting aggressed upon here by Johansson. Yeah. Johansson manages to pick up the kill. Imp a little bit uh, too over eager. Gee, I wonder what could have helped there. I wonder if it could have been a certain purple buff that you people used to have. And here's the engagement coming out of Berkeley United. Lots of low health bars for both teams, but it does look like Team Synchronized will come out on top here as the Zant United is used to shield away some damage. Mikrodal RP going very low. Keymix, let's bouncing all the way into Berkeley United space and they clean and sweep it up. Three for one so far. Johansson coming in with the home guard boots, but he will not be able to stop this inhibitor turret from going down. Will he be able to stop the inhibitor from going down? His ultimate is not available, so that's a solid no. Team Synchronize pick up the inhibitor, the inhibitor turret, and even possibly a Nexus turret in one strong push. The push just after their Baron bow ran out, ladies and gentlemen. And here we go, second, going very low again. Johansson, gonna be the last target. It's 
gonna be... No, it's not gonna quite be the ace, but it does look like Synchronize will be able to pick up the game here. Two seconds until Mikkel RP is back up. Nine seconds and since, until Pose Magnet is back up. If Berkey United manages to push this away, they're gonna be stuck in their base for a long time. Johansson jumping and trying to deal as much damage as possible. Now Ram and Sandra and Jinx are back. They might actually be able to turn this one around here as Team Synchronize attacks the Nexus awkwardly and now says, no, we should probably get out of here because we aren't able to finish this game off quite yet. Definitely not. We are going to see the members of Team Synchronize just back away from this. Pose that Magnet Mechal RP right on their backs. Super Mega Death Rocket, not enough to kill Ost. And we do see the disengage complete. Mod going a little bit off to the side. He actually oh, Ost actually going in, eats an auto attack from Jinx and dies. That's what you what happens if you're poking your head in too far. And Key Mix getting slowed here by the Zap Mickle RP and Full Pursuit. He wants to. Power ball directly into their faces. It's condensing onto the wall by Imp though. Now Ava's gonna come in from the bottom river. He has a lot of damage sitting on him. And here comes Kimix jumping back in with the elastic slingshot. Will Mikkel RP be able to get away from this? The rest of his team joins him and saves his life. Yeah, Baron is live once again. And one minute, 15 seconds it is before the next dragon. Baron most likely going to be the slightly more contested objective, but a massive advantage now held by Team Synchronize. Both Nexus turrets are down. One very good split push could almost mean the end of the game right now. And we do see members of Team Synchronize warning up that Baron. They want nothing to slip under their noses at this stage. Yep. And who... Who... Who could... Who could Team Synchronize possibly split push with? Both Shen and Zack could work at this stage. You could use a stealth vein. Come on, you could, have, work. you could have at least played along. You could have said the stealth vein, vein right away. See, my purpose was it to create comedic, uh, create a comedic effect by asking what could they possibly split push with when there are two perfectly normal and uh, obvious choices in their team composition. I have just now explained the joke, which ruined it. This is my story, and I'm sticking to it. Ruining it further. <laughs> See, Abe does not yet go for the static ship and instead decides to pick up a Trinity Force off the bat. He had over three and a half thousand gold backing this time. Five, two, and ten with a very impressive 236 CS. Not the highest in the game, that goes across to his middle lane at Ost with 286. But once again, Team Synchronize do go for that Baron. And I'm not sure if the Berkey United are actually going to be quick enough to stop them. They arrive in time, Oz gets pulled in by the Blitzcrank, immediately some damage going down on him, but he uses the Zonias to shield away the damage. Imp going very low here, trying to take down Joe Hansen, but he will be able to pick him up before he goes down. Now Let's Bounce is used by Kimix here, who, uh, the Baron is still alive, guys, and here Team Synchronize picks it up, finally, aggress onto Blitzcrank, he's going down as well. Mikkel RP is gonna be the last target, as Posey Magnet, the only survivor of that engagement, triple kill for... Team Synchronize, they pick up the Baron, the only thing they have to do now is charge into Berkeley United's base and pick up the Nexus as it stands right here. So this is gonna be the game, ladies and gentlemen, for Team Synchronize if they win game one of the best of three between Team Synchronize and Berkeley United. Jose Magnet going back in, trying to do his best, gets taken down. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Yes, it is. 26 to 16, the kills. 37 minutes tonight on for the victory, and 70,000.5, 251.1, so now on 15, no, 20,000 almost, if I stand corrected, gold lead, team synchronized as the game ends, 9 for 4 in turrets. Very impressive start by team synchronized. We're going to have to see how Berkey United are going to switch this up to pick up the second game and stop that 3,200 RP from slipping out of their grasp. Indeed. We will. Game 1 goes over to Team Synchronize in a very convincing win. 20,000 gold at 36 minutes and 49 seconds, but still got some games going, ladies and gentlemen, and we will get right back to them in just a couple of minutes. Stick around.